Hello everybody, how's it going? It's me, Krendor, and welcome back to Krendor Talks in front of a shitty green screen. Today, we're talking about Seraphon, everybody. It's here. The Seraphon Battle Tome has arrived. The box set is here. Um, and I was uh, lucky enough to have Games Workshop send me the new box set uh, a few weeks ago. So I've been able to build and prime the models. I started painting my new Slan, and uh, I'm probably going to do some videos and streams on that. But I've also been able to... Uh, test out a lot of the new battle tome and kind of just look through everything and I kind of want to give my opinions on it um, Obviously a lot of it has leaked already uh, So I was like well, I want to do like a full review if that's the case, right? I, I figured I'd, I'd give some experiences, right? I've played around with it a bit um, And you know, I kind of want to say what I like and what I don't like about it, right? So um, I think the the first thing that I noticed is that Starborn is is good again. <laughs> um, I've played like 75% of the games I've kind of tested out have been Starborn, and it's it's wild, man. It's so fun. So the the issue with the old book um, is that Starborn was you choose whether to cast your spells or summon stuff, right? That was it. You had to either you know sacrifice your spells to get points, or you would cast your spells. But now you get points. For casting spells, which is actually really fun. I love that. I think it's great. It allows you to, um, you know, actually play the slam the way they should be played, which is casting spells and doing all that. And then it also allows you to get these points, and you don't have to summon, right? You have um, various different abilities that allow you to choose whether you want to summon something or um, just, you know, you can either restore models. I, think, I believe it's D3 models to uh, everything within a, a node, which is just like a slam, the temple, or the astrolith. Uh, and I think I think it's only one or two wound models, I'm pretty sure. So still, you're restoring D3 models to like literally everything uh, that's near one. And then you've got, for 10 points, you can make the astrolith a 5-up ward, which is actually insane. Uh, especially for this army. <laughs> That has like terrible ward. They, I mean, their ward saves are like the new Star Seer and the Astrolith. That's like it. Nobody else has ward saves. Um, so being able to bump that Astrolith bear from like a six to a five, it almost makes me want to run two Astrolith bears. You know what I mean? And have one sit back and have one go up and like just pop that, and then boom, your army's got a five up ward. Like, okay, <laughs> um, you become Nurgle. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Then, um, the the 15.1 is the mortal wounds, which is everybody within 12 of a coalesced node or coale uh, a cosmic node. It takes a D6 mortal wounds on a two up. Essentially, you roll the dice and if it's a two up, if it's like, you know, if it's a one, you fail. But if it's anything else, you do that many mortal wounds and you do that for each unit, which is kind of insane because you're probably already Lord Croak spamming mortal wounds, right? You're like, bleh, bleh, bleh. And then you just pop this to just kind of finish things off. So, um, the what I've noticed is that, you know, a lot of times people heal back their units they're playing with, right? Like maybe your your Lord Croak and your Slan, they do Comet's Call, they do Celestial Deliverance, you're blowing stuff up, and then, you know, they, they try to, like, hold on, right? They're like, you know what, I'm just going to heal up, I'm going to, um, you know, Heroic Recovery, I'm going to pop my prayers, do all these things, but then... You know, you have to like, you got to keep hitting them, right? And then you're like, oh, my temple hits you for mortal wounds. And then I'm going to pop 15 points. And then you take a bunch of mortal wounds, right? You're just, you keep bringing it on. And it hits the point where they're just like, oh, they get overwhelmed. Um, to the point where I almost think Lord Croak uh, is probably broken. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's kind of one of the issues I have with the new book is it feels like Lord Croak is insane, which I honestly don't mind from like a thematic standpoint because he's, you know, he is supposed to be insane. Like, he's supposed to be on par with some of the best gods in Warhammer, right? It's like he's the oldest slan, you know, he... But the, at the same time, uh, you could probably do it in a little bit of a different, la different way instead of just, like, Celestial Deliverance, Celestial Deliverance, Celestial Deliverance, right? You know, I mean, he'd still be good if he couldn't spam Celestial Deliverance. The problem now is that it used to be... Um, he did it on a 7, then he did it on an 8, then he did it on a 9, then he did it on a 10. Like, it, it ramped up in difficulty. And then once you got it, it was on a 2-up, you do D3. Now it's just on a 7, every 3 units take D3. Like, it's just, it's it. 
<laughs> so you just go like, all right, boom, boom. And you're, you know, most of the time, you're plus whatever to cast. So, you know, you're next to the Astrolith. You already get plus two, and then the Slan gives everyone else plus one. So you're essentially plus four. So as long as you roll not a miscast, <laughs> you get to do it. Or unless they unbind you, but, you know, they're they're probably worn out at that point. They're like, oh, God, you know, how many spells do you got to cast? And you're like, let's see, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, I only got like 10, 11 spells to cast, <laughs> right? So... Um, it's, it's pretty insane. I think Lord Croak and Slan and just generating all these points, uh, usually what I've done is, you know, I've popped some of those mortal wounds and then I've also summoned in a Bastilladon solar engine because I like the fact that the solar engine can, you know, you summon it in and it just can sit there and hold a point if you need it to. Uh, it can just blast everything at minus three rend for three damage, although I've rolled terribly with it. I've, I've literally done so bad with that but still you know you can you can burst through a lot of their tanky stuff with that um and it's just hard to kill because the B bastilladon doesn't bracket anymore right so that's pretty insane um and uh, that's that's kind of what i've really enjoyed is just playing starborn the the times i've tried coalesced like the old thunder lizard army it doesn't feel as good um Maybe it's just the small sample size, because obviously I haven't really played that much, but it, I don't know. It, it, that, Starborn feels a lot more fun. Um, I think maybe you just got to play around with Coalesce. Now, I will say I haven't used the new Agrodon uh, Knight guys. Are they Knights? Agrodon Lancers or whatever? Uh, the new Cavalry. The new Saurus Cavalry, essentially. So uh, I think they're going to be really cool. The guys right here, they're there. <laughs> I think they're going to be a staple of Coalesced. Uh, and I also think Croxagores and Source Warriors. I think it's going to be less monsters like it used to be. You know, obviously you'd run like three Stegadons and the Chief and like all this stuff. And I think now it's going to be more focused on Source Warriors and the Cavalry and the Croxagores and all of them charging, getting the plus one to wound and all that stuff, right? So I think um, the monsters are probably going to be more like support esque pieces like you're like oh you know what i'm gonna throw a bastilladon solar engine there because i need something to blast through their threat right like maybe you want to charge your warriors or your um agrodon lancers in but you're like oh that unit he's got is tanky and it does mortal wounds and you're like you know what i gotta hit it with the solar engine so you just blast away at it with the solar engine maybe you bracket it down whatever right so you know you kind of Pick what you want, and then maybe you have like a, a Saurus General who's like a Carnosaur guy, like a Saurus Old Blood on Carnosaur or something. So, you know, I think they are more support pieces now. Uh, or maybe even you take a Stegadon just to have some more shooting and to count as 10 models on a point. Like, that's a thing, although they are a little pricey uh, at 300 still. So, uh, you know, I, it, it kind of sucks because they are... You know, things change, right? And I, I think it's for the best, to be honest, because I think Coalesced was really strong. <laughs> it was really strong. Um, and it was also not as fun because I, I want to use the, all the units, right? I want to use my Source Warriors. I want to use my, you know, all these different things. And the Croxagores, my God. I, 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 The Croxagores used to be so bad. And not just their War Scroll, but like the actual models as well. They're not good. <laughs> And so it's nice that you can actually run them. They can be battle line now. Um, there's a, a lot of different uh, variety of ways to get different battle line, which is really nice and something they've done a lot of in 3.0. Um, and that's been really cool. So I'm excited to do a lot of that. Um, but aside from that, uh, I, I do like the amount of unit variety. One thing that did bother me was they removed... Um, the priests from a lot of the things, you know, I always assume like, oh, you know, if you have skink priests, you have the engine of the gods, right? You have a bunch of different priests as well. And I don't know if they removed it to simplify things, right? But it does kind of suck just losing the priest keyword completely. You know what I mean? Like at least I feel like they should have at least kept it on the engine of the gods. You know what I mean? Because right now the engine of the gods, the new one blows ass. <laughs> it's not good. Um, I read that war scroll. I was so excited. I'm like, dude, the engine of the gods, maybe they're gonna do something crazy with it. And I read it and I was like, this sucks. <laughs> like, I don't know. It, it, it's a shame because I like the engine of the gods, but it, it just, they need to, it needs to drop points. Uh, because I think they were worried because it summons in source warriors, but like it summons them in like turn three or four. 
right? Like, if you summon in Source Warriors, turn four, who cares? <laughs> like, you're, the game's probably over by that point, you know what I mean? And then, what are you doing? You're investing 300 points so that this thing can sit there and just keep holding on to its points, and then hopefully at some point it's like, and it, like, volcano explodes and you get the bonuses you're hoping for? Like, I don't know. It just, it doesn't feel like a well-written War Scroll. Um, I would have much preferred it be like a monster support, which I think is what it should act like. Like, it, you know, obviously it used to be a priest. It could do things like heal, it could curse. And I feel like it should have had that type of war scroll, something where it's like, you know, you you can roll. Uh, I do like the idea the, or the concept of picking what you want and then rolling for it, right? Instead of roll your engine of the gods, this is what you got, right? You're just playing a slot machine. I do like the concept of like, you know what? I want to pick the heal. And it's like, okay, if you want to do the heal, roll two dice and you got to roll like a, a four up or something, right? And then it's like, oh, you know what? I want to do the last strike. It's like, oh, you got to roll like a nine for that. And then it's like, oh, I want to do uh, something else. Like, oh, you got to roll this for that. You know, I like that. And I like the concept of like, if you need, you know, you could hold on and not do anything, get another dice and get your roll to be better. But everything just feels... Um, it just, it doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? Like, I think it should have the heal, but it should be easier to get off. It should have the, I think the last strike effect's cool, but obviously it's another thing where, you know, it should be like, not, I think it's not an 11 or something. Like, it should, because they're, they're essentially being like, hold your dice, right? And I don't, I think that kind of sucks. You know, it should have an incentive of like, um, you you want to use your abilities every turn. You know what I mean? Unless you're really saving up for something crazy, which is why I think incentivizing crazier, bigger engine of the god things should have been a priority, and instead it just feels like... It just doesn't feel good. <laughs> I don't know. I really need to, like... I would... I need to, like, sit down and think about it more and, like, what I would change and everything, but... To me, you have abilities to use them. And the, the whole point of the Engine of the Gods now is, like, don't use your ability until the game's over. And it's like, well, that's just dumb, right? It, you know, it should it should be a support. You know, it should be heal. Even if it gave, like, a ward, I would have rather just given a ward save. Like, oh, it's kind of like an Astral of Bear, right? You know, maybe it gives monsters a ward. Or maybe it, uh, you know, just something. Some sort of support mechanic. <laughs> maybe you have to roll for it, or I don't know. Um, man. Rip Engine. Uh, I do like what they did with the um, the other Bastilladon, where it doesn't bracket now. It's got 20 attacks. The uh, the Arc of Sotek, it still does sixes to hit through mortals. And then if you throw the Star Priest's um, buff onto it, you're getting sixes to wound through mortal wounds in addition to the sixes to hit through mortal wounds. And it used to be fours by sixes. Now it's fours by threes. So you're going to hit a lot or you're going to wound a lot more um, for 200 points. So I think it's... Okay, honestly, the reason I take I would take an arc of Sotek, I think, is to just be really annoying. <laughs> like 200 points just to be annoying. Like you, what you're doing is you're just parking it on an objective or you're screening something and you're making your opponent have to get through a Bastilladon. And probably you just put it near like a block of their like, you know, a 20 man block of something, right? Where they're just like, you know what? I'm going to have this 20 man block. It's going to go get get that objective, right? And then boom, Bastilladon's there. And you're like, come on in. And they just run into it. And then you just got the unbracketed two plus save. And then it's doing just, uh, you know, a bunch of mortal wounds and then some shitty rend attack. But who cares? Because they probably have bad saves on their big block of stuff anyway. And they just, they get stuck there, you know? So I think that would be a good use for it, but... You know, it, it still probably needs a little help, but it's it's better than it used to be. So that's saying something. Uh, and it's a cheap monster for 200 points. Uh, then the, you know, and the engine and the Stegadon both cost 300. So uh, I don't know. I, I think I'd rather just take a Stegadon. <laughs> At least it counts for 10 models on a point. You know what I mean? Um, so as, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other stuff then. This is me just like winging it, how I feel about the book. I think a lot of the... Uh, the Allegiance abilities are... I already covered Starborn, but I think with Coalesce, keeping the minus one damage is... It's good. I would have preferred a ward save. It's kind of what I wanted uh, initially, because I think... Honestly, I think it'd be better. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, it's it's still good. I'm not going to complain, uh, especially when you still have the Astral with Bear. You can put that and get a six-up ward in Coalesce. 
Um, but uh, I still would have liked some more ward saving. I don't know. Maybe it might have been too strong, to, to be honest. But uh, And then getting plus one to your bite attacks, which have changed to being mortal wounds now, which is both good and bad. Uh, you know, I've seen people go back and forth. A lot of people saying uh, it's worse because you don't get all your attacks off because it's an ability. Uh, and say you're fighting, like, a block of ten guys, and then you're facing them with ten guys, and then you kill, like, seven of them, and they remove them all. Well, there's three left, and the ones that are on the opposite side, they can't use their bite attacks because they're not next to the models anymore. While if it was the Old War Scroll, they'd get to attack anyway because it's part of the attack profile. So losing it as part of the attack profile kind of sucks, but at the same time, the old bites also suck. <laughs> So, being able to do mortal wounds is actually really nice, and then you're also getting plus one if you're coalesced, so they're on five ups or mortal wounds, and if you're near the temple, um, you're getting four ups mortal wounds. So, I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, even if you only get a couple bites in, right? Like, you, that's still, like, three to four mortal wounds. Like, that's still pretty good. Like, a lot of people, you know, pay a lot of points to just get you know, three to four mortal wounds. You're just kind of dishing that out with your Saurus warriors or whoever it might be. I mean, even the heroes, they get like three bite attacks each. The Croxagors th get three bite attacks each. Um, so I, I actually do like the new bite mechanic. Um, but uh, I, I still think Starborn's, <laughs> Starborn's better. The new Monstrous Rampages are also pretty cool. I like them. Um, the, the Troglodon one is kind of like whatever it's like situational you increases like minus one to hit aura from nine to 12 but i would have rather he did something else <laughs> i don't know something more with like poison i think would be cool uh but whatever i'm not you know it's i like i like the customized monstrous rampages i think they're really fun um even if some of them aren't as good as i thought they'd be but whatever you know it's still stuff uh in terms of the command traits, I think the best one is probably just the one where your slan gets two points instead of one when he casts stuff or unbinds or whatever, because you just get more summoning point superstar points to spend. <laughs> like, it's just good. Um, a lot of the other command traits and artifacts are just kind of, like, okay. Like, the, the ones that give you a free move are really good. The ones that give you, like, plus one save, uh, all that type of stuff are good. But, like, today... Um, I tried out a game and I put, uh, I had my slan have that. And then he had the, you know, you, instead of a nine inch deep strike, you get a seven inch, which is really good if you're running the new sub faction, um, the, which is just the old sub faction, dr uh, draconian's tail. And you can deep strike within seven. You're essentially Stormcast, <laughs> And you know, that's pretty nice. Plus if you're chameleon skinks, deep strike, um, they can go within seven, which is good for, like, taking points or terrain and stuff like that, which is really nice. That's what kind of what I've used it for um, with Chameleon Skinks. Um, which, like, old Chameleon Skinks are gone, but they're still there. They're just the hunters of Huan Chi or whatever they're called now. And you can take either the the Bola boys or the Blow Dart guys. They're essentially it's the same. And the Bola ones are a little bit... They don't do mortal wounds. They're a little, you know, more melee-centric. But I usually take those, like, 40 points cheaper. <laughs> Uh, and they can just deep strike and capture stuff easily. So you get a lot of movement with uh, a lot of the deep, well, bleh, a lot of the units that you get. Um, but the the other one, I think a lot of people are kind of just passing up is the the skink one. There's the fangs of Sotek, and you get three redeploys, and the first two are free. <laughs> uh, it's like a deal at Subway or something. <laughs> Although you don't get the free one right away. Uh, honestly, the redeploys, I think people are sleeping on the redeploy. I think you see it. And you go, oh, okay, or like, it's whatever. Um, but Skinks are now able to roll two dice when they redeploy or run, and you pick one of the results. And so when you have them being screens, because that's all Skinks are good for now, is like screens, They're, they kind of got shittier. But the, I think that's what they're supposed to be. They're 85 points, right? They, they screen. Um, if you block correctly, I mean, if somebody's trying to get through your screen, they're like, I'm just going to destroy these Skinks. And then you're you know, sitting there, and they move up three away, and then they move everything up, like, three away, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to redeploy for free. And then they just move, they roll two dice, and say you roll, like, a two and a five, or a two and a six, and you're like, oh, I guess I'm moving five or six. And then you move back, and now their entire army 
thought they were going to be three inches away and have an easy charge. And now it's like an eight or nine inch charge. And they have to do that with multiple units. And if they don't do it, they just spent that entire turn just being stuck there. And now, you know, we go back to your turn and then Lord Croak's sitting there and he's like, bleh, 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 and then he starts blasting them with mortal wounds again. <laughs> and then you summon in more skinks and then they just get behind those skinks and then they run into those skinks and then there's just another skink wall and then they redeploy. <laughs> So, I mean, uh, there's some wacky shenanigans you can do with, with the fangs of Sotek and a lot of really annoying movement that I think people are going to start figuring out pretty quickly. Um, it actually reminds me, back when I started playing Seraphon, uh, when I got back into the hobby, it was before their old book was out. It was like 2019. Their battle tome was essentially a GHB with rules in it. It was terrible. Um... But the, the the whole way you played was you had skinks, and skinks could retreat in combat. So you essentially just got skinks in combat, and then you would retreat with them onto objectives. <laughs> and it was really annoying and kind of dumb. And I really didn't like it, but it was extremely strong. It was like, uh, I think the Ungors have that ability now. Um, but it was, it was so annoying, because you could also teleport. So you would just teleport your skinks, then they would like charge in and then they would just retreat. So you could just be like, bruh, bruh, and you're just like going all crazy around the board. Um, and I think it's, I don't think it's that annoying, but I think it's going to be still pretty annoying um, because, you know, maybe they, they move up on your one skink thing and you're like, oh, redeploy, move back. Then they move up on your other one, oh, skink, redeploy, move back. And now, you know, again, you're making all their charges more difficult. And if they miss those charges, they're just kind of, they're just kind of screwed. <laughs> um, Plus, it makes your Raptodon Riders battle line. And your Raptodon Riders can also redeploy. and Because uh, it's any skink unit. I mean, even your uh, your Troglodon can redeploy. Your um, your Stegodons can redeploy. They're skink units, right? I don't believe it says a, there's a monster... Uh, there's no, like, monster monsters can't do it or anything. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just any skink unit. Uh, it's, it's actually, I think, really strong. Um, obviously deep striking within seven is also strong, but I think it just depends on your play style. So I actually do like the new sub factions there. And then I think Kotal's Claw is really nice with the plus one, the wound on the charge way better than plus one, the hit. Cause now you can get plus one to hit a billion different ways, but plus one, the wound is pretty difficult to get. So having your source and your Croxigors and all those dudes charge in and get that is nice. Um, Thunder Lizard's probably the weakest one, honestly. The only reason you probably take Thunder Lizard is if you want to... Do some wacky monster battle line, <laughs> which, you know, you can still do it for fun. You know, it's not like it's terrible, but it's, I, I think it's still probably the weakest option. Um, but, you know, they just had their fun in the sun. Honestly, the double shooting, I think, was dumb. I played with it. I played against it. It's fun when you're doing it. It's not as fun when you're getting blasted by it. But, uh, you know, it to me, it never really felt like Seraphon. You know what I mean? Like a Bastillodon Solar Engine just doing some... The way they've made it now, where it's just minus three rend, three damage, and it's just like, like just a big sol solar blast hitting you, I think feels a lot better than like 16 shots at minus one for two damage. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't... I think it feels a lot more thematic now, which I actually like. Um, and that's been a, a big thing they've done with a lot of the new books is just more thematic armies, which I think is really cool. I like that a lot. It, it feels like things play the way they look or if they play how they should play in your mind. You know what I mean? Um, but for some reason, the Slan doesn't know the entire spell lore. So that, you know, Lord Croak does, but the Slan doesn't. So I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know. I almost think they do that because they feel like it would be even more broken if the Slan just knows his whole spell lore too. But, um, you know, it, it, it's fine. Usually what I do is I have the Slan do Comets call, and then Lord Croak does four Celestial Deliverances. Or if he only needs a couple of them, then he can use the buffs or whatever. So that's that's pretty much what I do. And it works. <laughs> um, let's see, and then what else? Uh, the, the Troglodon, I've seen people say, ah, oh, you know, the Troglodon's still not that great. I think the Troglodon's in, like, the best spot it's ever been. <laughs> it's 270. But now it actually has a role as like a support dinosaur, which is what I wish the engine of the gods was. <laughs> um, because he gives a minus one to hit aura, which is already really good. Like everything within nine inches is minus one to hit. So you just park him like behind some Saurus warriors or behind something you don't want to die. 
And then if they charge in, it's like, oh, minus one to hit. And then you could also give them minus one to wound on that unit. So now they're minus one to hit and wound on whatever they're fighting. Uh, so that's pretty annoying. Although I think minus one to wound is skink unit only. So you can give it to the Troglodon. Troglodon's minus one to hit and wound now after you buff it up. Um, <laughs> and then, he, you know, he's got some mortal wounds he can deal out. They they made his attack profile a little better. So he does, uh, he can hit for like three mortal wounds now on his melee, which is nice. Um, and then he's got an okay spell. Honestly, and the, the main reason you're probably taking him is so you can cast through him because you can put him anywhere on the board and then Lord Crow can cast through him. So I literally won a game today because I took the Oracle and I was against Fire Slayers and I put him way back behind the Fire Slayers. So they had to go deal with him because otherwise they're just going to keep getting blasted. Uh, and so they go to deal with them and they, you know, they, they kill it. And then by the time they kill it, they're like, well, now we got to get across the board again. And they move so slow. It's like, yep. Yeah. And then game's over. The objectives are gone <laughs> and, uh, you win. So it, it's a lot of movement shenanigans. And I think the, the Oracle being able to be the, you know, the thing that the slan cast through is, is really strong. That's what makes it worth the points in my mind. Um, the Carnosaurs, I wish they bumped them up a little more. I think they're in a better, they're in a much better spot. They don't bracket as hard. They got some Ren now. But I do think they need to drop the points. I think they'll be okay if they drop the points, honestly. I think they could drop another, like, 20 points each. <laughs> um, maybe the, I think maybe the, the Old Blood needs to drop, like, 20, 25 points. And I think the Scar Veteran needs to drop, like, 10, 15. Um, because they're just, uh, I don't know. They're, they're not bad, but they're just not, they're not amazing or anything, right? So, uh, and then the, the Croxagors, I think are really good. Although I don't really like their skink ability thing they gave them. It's just like, if skinks die in that phase, you get your bonus attacks for the war Croxagors or whatever it is. Like, just, just have it so like, if skinks died within a range of these Croxagors this turn, they get their buff. Like, that would have just been easier, right? Like, oh, skinks, you know, so the Croxagors always have to stand near some skinks, even if it's, like, within six inches, right? Uh, you know, then they're always near them, and then, oh, skinks died this turn, so the Croxagors get the buff. That's that's just what it should have been. <laughs> so maybe if they die in the shooting phase, you get buffed up because they're angry. You know what I mean? Not just, why, why that specific phase? It's just, I think that's stupid. Um, maybe they'll FAQ it. Probably not, but who knows. Uh, and then rap the new Raptodon riders, I think are great. They get like 31 attacks each with the clubs and then the, the hunters can like throw minus two Ren spears. I think they're probably one of the best units in the book. Cause you just, you give them the mortal wounds to wound on sixes do, uh, well on sixes to wound, you do mortal wounds plus the normal damage you do. So you're just doing a bunch of mortal wounds and your normal damage, which is insane for like 150 points. <laughs> like, wow. We, um, so yeah, those are the main things. Uh, I love the new the, the new temple rules they did where like Coalesce and Starborn each have their own temple. I love that you don't have to garrison in your temple anymore. Thank God. I hated garrisoning in that temple. And then you had like stack stuff on the temple and then the, the slan gets bumped and he falls off and you're like, my slan. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I think everything else is like, okay. Um, but I, you know, I think at the end of the day, I think it's a pretty... I think it's a solid battle tome. I, you know, some things I'm disappointed with, some things I'm pretty happy about. Uh, but overall, I think it's, I think it's a very good book. Um, and I think uh, I didn't even mentioned the new, uh, the new Salamander artillery thing for like 125 points. Its melee profile still insane, and it can like do minus one save on the one shot, or it can kind of burn through a bunch of, you know, a pack of ten or more with shitty saves. Um, so that's probably another unit that's going to see some play, but, uh, you know, overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with the book. You know, at first I was kind of like, eh, and then after playing around with it and, you know, doing different lists and everything, I, I like it more than I thought I would. And I think I'm going to like it even more once I get the new, the new Agridon riders and the, you know, more Croxagors. Cause I've just been using my one pack of old shitty ones. <laughs> Um, and once I get more of the new units that I can actually use and, you know, probably the new Astrolith, cause I'm going to run two Astrolith bears and be really annoying. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of different things you can do. So there's, you know, for all the bad, 
things that I mentioned, like losing Priest and the engine being bad and like some other stuff. There's still a lot of good. And I think it's just another thing where it's going to change the way everybody plays Seraphon. And so yeah, that's, just, that's what happens, right? Every book changes the way people play the game. So uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Hopefully you enjoyed my 30 minute rant and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay. Okay. See ya.